elected to be the moderator of this Union School District last year, and I'm calling this annual meeting to order. And the first item of business is to elect a moderator, and I'll let Scott preside over that election. Thank you very much, Gus, and welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, in order to elect a moderator, I would welcome a motion from the floor to, um, to nominate a candidate for moderator. I nominated Gus Selig. Scott Bassage nominates Gus Selig for moderator. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. Um, may I have your name, please? Mary Ormsby. Mary Ormsby. <laughs> Tricky question. Uh, it's been a long year. It's been a long year. It is. Very true. Um, are there any other nominations from the floor? If there are no other nominations from the floor, would all in favor of Gus Selig as moderator please say aye. 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 I guess that does it, guys. You're elected. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Gus, did you want to use the uh, podium? Would it be easier for you? I said it went up for you. Let's see. How, how does this work? Can you hear me in the back? OK. You can hear me in the back. Um, tonight, we're most, this is just a meeting to discuss the proposed Central, Washington Central Unified Union School District's budget and articles of warning. So we're not going to do any business. We're going to just learn to, tonight. That's the purpose of this meeting. Uh, before we get into that, and there'll be a short presentation, Scott, I understand there's another piece of business you wanted to do. So I'm going to turn it to you to do that business. Once again, thank you very much, Gus. Um, just so that you know, I have been wondering, ever since I was um, made chair of this board, uh, what, if any, perks there might be to compensate for the multitude of um, hassles that accompany the, um, the position. And finally, on the very last day of this board's, this currently seated board's existence, I have discovered it. And that is, I am able to preside over first a Thanksgiving dinner of sorts, or, or maybe a dinner of Thanksgiving. And now this meeting and a chance to um, present at least a, a small token of gratitude to, um, to those uh, among us who were precursors of this board and who remain friends and valued colleagues, neighbors, fellow citizens. So um, if you will permit me, uh, I don't plan to take up too much time, but um, I, I don't know if Will Baker is here. Uh, Will is not, but um, Ruben, may I invite you to come up? Thank you. Is Karen Bradley here? Um, I don't see Chris Cabaret. Um, Eric? Chase? No. Um, Darcy? So much gratitude and so few people to receive it. Um, Allison? No Allison? Um, Susanna is not here either. Nicole? this experience is to see that there's a fairly high recidivism rate among former board members. Um, 
So, uh, Caroline. Um, Julie, is Julie here? Katie, no. Peter, no. But Corinne. Brian, Chris, Richards, but Carl Wicke is here. Um, however, uh, among those who we weren't sure were able to come, there is Mr. Rick here. We're very happy to. You get my autograph, right? That's worth more. Okay. Um, so that that concludes the fun part of the evening. Um, now. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to discuss the proposed Washington Central budget. Um, Gus, is this something I should be? You can take whoever's going to present this. Want to go to it? Okay. Thank you very much. So um, this session is essentially we have teed up a budget presentation. But um, I think many of you are already familiar with the budget or uh, have other issues that you'd like to raise. So what I'm hoping we'll be able to do, this is just sort of to, to keep things moving for when there's nothing else better or more interesting for you to talk about. Um, but this is, this is your meeting, and we want very much for you to, um, to get out of it what you hope to. These are the, these are the board goals, very general, but um, you may find that this, is, uh, this very event involves essentially all three of these goals. So, the school board that is seated up through tomorrow is, as you see here, um, Lindy, would you start, please? I'm Lindy Johnson from East Montpelier. And Chris McCray from Middlesex. Scott Thompson from Callis. Gloria Smith from East Montpelier. Dorothy Naylor from Callis. Jonas Eden Van Fleet from Worcester. Jael Tolskamp from Worcester. And we are missing Vera Fraser from Berlin, George Gross from Berlin, and Mary Lynn Strachan from Middlesex. So this is the cartoon version of what we've been doing over the past few months. Um, this is just to show that the budget is the result of um, a lot of pulling and hauling and pushing and counter-pushing. It's also the result of a cyclical approach where um, the administration prepares the budget drafts. They send them through the finance committee and the board, as well as forums like this, and then back before it's developed. Now, what you're seeing now is the final result of several iterations of this process. The, um, the part, basically where you, where you are on this chart is in between the second to bottom box that says board approval and the bottom box that says voter approval. Um, enrollment is very important because it is uh, the denominator of the tax formula um, 
Our enrollment, as you can see, is relatively flat with a slight downward inflection. Equalized pupils are an administrative construct where, depending on the, um, the type of student, uh, age, I, I think um, other factors weigh in, special education, um, poverty as well, um, that feeds into the calculation of equalized pupils. And it's the equalized pupils that divides into the total education spending in the budget to give that crucial ratio of spending per pupil that determines the tax rate. These are just, um, perhaps you would call them highlights, um, information, um, pretty much speaks for itself. And this is, this is the summary of the budget. Um, if you look over to the far right hand side, the big bold face number is combined expenses. And then there are uh, subtracting from, there's a revenue factor that decreases to an education spending increase of 3.09%. Um, I'm going to stop here and just any questions, any comments, any concerns? Salary and benefits seem kind of high. Do you have any economic conditions? The, um, by a rise by, yeah. by, you mean the increase yeah. seems high? 5.43%? Um, this, <clears throat> excuse me, I would um, maybe defer to Lori. Um, the salary and benefit increase isn't just a salary and benefit increase, it's also staffing changes. And so if you have a book and you look on page 20, it kind of outlines more detail about what that increase represents. Um, would you like me to go through the top area there, Rick, and explain it? Um, health inflation is going up 12.9%. Um, we have a, about a 1.182925, 3.49% um, are negotiated costs. And you can see the staffing changes below that represent 1.94%. And those are primarily in special education with reimbursements. That's the staffing. There's there's three lines for staffing on that page, and you can see um, the bulk of them are in special education. And, and Lori, may yes. I ask the revenues on the second line from the bottom, the minus five hundred twenty nine thousand. Um, are those primarily reimbursements for special education? Um, it actually makes up. It's made up by three three big items that are at the bottom of that page. It's additional tuition income. It's special education reimbursements and transportation <coughs> aid on our buses for our students to get to and from school. Thank you very much. Is my mic working okay? I got it. I'm not going yeah. to touch on my mic. I think people can hear I'll, I'll yeah. shut it off for now. Correct. Since something is being said about staffing, <clears throat> I've already brought it up to a couple of people, but I was really disappointed that salary staff information wasn't included in the annual report. Most of the towns have been including that information in their local town reports. And to not have it when 70% of the budget is staffing um, was very disappointing to me. And now I, I requested a copy, which I got, but apparently there's some uh, reticence about posting it with the other budget resources online, which again, it's $24.5 million of the budget, and it seems like that should be available to folks. Thank you, Karen. Can people use the mic when they're speaking from the audience? Uh, we have two mics over there. One can stand up when you're speaking, uh, and it mentions your name, so we can record you. 
few of the minutes, that would be helpful. If you don't mind if I suggest that. Of course, no, no, no. Or we could just move it over there, that would be helpful. It's all wireless, so anywhere. Okay, thank you. 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 Would you like to hear the comment uh, repeated? Yes. Uh, Corinne, would you like to? Staffing, I was very disappointed that in the annual school report that a list of staffing information was not included. It's been included in local town reports, and even though we're one district now, it is something specifically in Berlin. Our voters have voted in the past to have that information included. It makes up 70% of that $35 million budget which would be $24.5 million. And it seems like that information should be available to folks. I did receive a copy when I requested it. Central office seems a bit reticent to post it on the website, even though it's been in town reports and posted on websites before. And I hope that can be rectified again. It's a large chunk of the budget, and I think people like to know where the money is going to. Thanks. Yeah. Good. Um, I'd also like to invite some of my colleagues on the board. If um, if you have any comments that you'd like to make at this point, as this chart is is shown, anything that you would like to highlight or I, I, I guess I would just want to thank the administrators for all the work because they've been working on this since September with uh, with us, and it's about it's, this is the sixth draft I think that we've worked on. So just say that when we have the public with us. Great. Thanks, Mark. Anything else? Should we proceed? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Kimberly, Oh, I'm sorry. Kimberly. Hi, uh, Kimberly Dessup. And my question is, now that this is a unified budget, can somebody speak to how the infrastructure, construction, depreciation costs, etc., are addressed? It looks like there was a transfer from the capital fund to offset debt, debt service, but I'm just wondering now what the prioritization process was in terms of building this budget for all the disparate parts now becoming one. Thank you very much. Great question. Um, once again, Laurie, do you want to explain that line, please? Um, Turn your mic on, please. Okay, um, that line is a combination of the loan repayments for the year and a transfer to the capital fund. Um, there's more information in the book about breaking that into two lines um, because that includes the debt service and that's actually a reduction in debt service since the U32 base bond has been paid off. So that's not an increase, that's a decrease of 390000 just so you're aware because the bond payment has been paid off on this building, the first bond. There's two bonds on this building. Thank you. What I'm also just trying to get at is, given the different elementary schools having different needs, how is the budget going to address and prioritize among those needs? Um, that's a that's a wonderful question, and um, I would I would first invite the administration to um, to answer it. But it, it, there's I think there's still discussion to come on this. But okay. Um, so when we um, for this particular year, we have a couple sets of funds going on. We have the money that came over from the existing buildings when we merged. And that money is separate and distinct by building. And then we have uh, an amount in this budget that is going to be appropriated based on a plan that the board had reviewed and authorized. So there is money by town. Uh, there are projects in motion. There is a plan in place for each school. Um, the board received a summary of that over the last few months meetings. 
and that we're kind of catching up with that. Um, where we are going forward is we're developing a plan for the future, um, and we've been working on that as an initial stage for this year. But right now we have approximately 15 building projects um, for uh, improvements going on this summer. So if you'd like a copy of that, I didn't bring it tonight, I don't know if anyone did, but we could email it to you. So at least you would know what was going on at each building for this year. But there's about 15 projects I counted, um, some are smaller than others. Okay? Thank you, Lori. Um, and there's, uh, one moment, Corinne. Um, there's still the unresolved question of distribution of, of bed service from pre-merger lots that um, it hasn't yet been, we haven't yet figured out how to, how to account for that in the, um, in the grand scheme of things. But we're hoping that we can maybe make some progress on that.
I, we are going to keep a sense of our schools. We need to have that detailed information. And I don't know, maybe it's too expensive to print, but it should be at least available online and there should be paper copies for those people who don't have a computer facility. So I too am very disappointed. I thought it was a slick production, but it didn't tell me anything. Thank you very much, Adam. Well, Rick came from Thomas. I'm flirting with that. And, and this was Act 46 after the initial claims that this was all about cost. And then it turned into this was all about equity. Well, we need to have some checks and balances on equity. And we are only getting this 30,000 foot look. And we've broken these budgets down by school for forever in the past. It's not a lot of extra work to do this and maintain that. And it's a way we can be looking at what's being invested in schools versus performance, these students coming out of those schools. And I, I really want to see this. I don't have, I, I believe in that, you know, trust but verify. Because we've led astray a number of times in the past several years. And I don't have great trust. I want to see details in these, in these budgets. And I want to see them by town. So that, thank you. Thanks, Rick. Can I try to, I, I don't know that, I, can you hear me? I don't know that I have all the answers that you're looking for, but what I can tell you is that the budget is built in the, what students need, right? So, so this budget doesn't cut from the instructional pie, and what we're trying, what we're really, really trying to do is, is build in our multi-tier system of supports. So what this budget represents is investment in, uh, in teacher, in um, uh, educating teachers, so teacher, um, the work is professional development, and we're investing in tier two interventions, which is when, when you give a child at least six weeks of like a quick uh, extra on math or literacy, do you, you make sure that that kid is not gonna go into needing a special education. So, so this budget represents the use of best practices to bring student outcomes up. So, so, it is build, so it's hard to break it out in, in buildings, really, because what it is, is, is how do we take care of all the kids in, at, at different levels, right? The high school has different needs the middle school has different needs, and each of our schools has different needs. But how do we, we haven't had completely the equity conversation among our board, we haven't had that conversation, but this this uh, this budget started at that level. So all of our principals uh, collaborated to, to make sure that we were gonna have best outcomes for kids, which is what we are all here about, right? That's all I can offer. Rick, do you wanna speak again? Right to that point, uh, I get that. I was as board member before, I mean, I was privy to those conversations as well, and I've been in a lot of board meetings here. <clears throat> what I don't, we talk about trainings, what I want to be able to do is look at performance in these students. I want to see if you've got you know, lower performance coming out of the schools. I want to be able to verify that we've actually got more of the right kind of resource going to those schools. I don't need infinite amounts of detail, but I want to have some. And I don't want this big gray box. I, you know, I'm 61 years old, and I've watched this all my life in politics, you know, at every level. You know, the, the, the public are paying the taxes, and we support the students. These are our kids, and our community kids. This is our community. These are our community. We want them to be strong, but we want to, we will do our due diligence to look at that and make sure that's happening. We expect to have that kind of information, that kind of detail. There are a lot of important points being made here, and uh, the, I mean, one thing to realize is that with the merger, we now have a $35 million budget that puts us pretty much comparable to the Vermont Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Um, which has about the same budget. So basically, we've become a public bureaucracy. And in order to, uh, and we're functioning that way. <clears throat> and it, maybe there's, there are ways that we can, we 
can get into those details um, so as to make sure that we don't turn people off or don't alienate them um, from, from their connection to their schools, which is part of what keeps them alive and vibrant. Um, but uh, please, more, as you come up with these comments, they're, they're very valuable and appreciate them greatly. This is the pie chart that shows essentially the distribution of the 35 million throughout all six schools in the central office. As you can see, almost three quarters is already salary and benefits. And even in some of those smaller pie slices, there are also, that money is also going to pay people. So um, this is an aspect of the budget that I think is important always to bear in mind, that this is an economic engine for our, for our region, for our communities, that the people who get paid from this budget are actually paying back into our communities in, in all kinds of different ways. So there's a, a real multiplier effect that I think redounds to, to the benefit of all of us. And this is, um, this is just looking at changes in the budget from uh, this year to next year. Most of these increases are going into aspects of the organization that directly work with students. Um, and to my way of thinking, this is, if we're going to look at the budget from a 30,000 foot altitude, um, this is the sort of thing that we would hope to see, is um, these kinds of investments. And the change, the, the absolute change, is, um, is basically from top to, to bottom. They're not exactly so, they're pretty close. If there are no comments. Jonathan? Yeah. I just had one just concerning the, um, the food uh, program support. As I think many of you know, or some of you know, uh, I've spoken in the past about the idea that, the, that our community ought to provide uh, breakfast and lunch for all the students at no cost. I still think that, I still believe that. And so I would be interested in knowing what that number would be. And I realize it's a projection and I'm not asking for that obviously right now because this budget's already been passed, but um, that in future budgets or in development of future budgets that that number be uh, researched and determined as to what it would cost um, our communities to provide, uh, and it may not be, uh, you know, French cuisine by any means. But if kids, but if kids can come to school and have a good meal, a healthy meal at breakfast and a good one at lunch every day uh, when they're in school, would be, I think, a monumental uh, support for our kids and our families here. So, and it would be truly something that. Um, the nation would look at as a wonderful thing. So, and I think it could be done. I just don't know what that number is. And I know it's a lot more than $150,000. Thank you very much, Jonathan. I don't have the number here tonight. We did it. Yeah, we did have it. So these are the tax rate projections based on the budget that you've just been looking at. You can see for your town where it comes out. The, the major changes in our tax rates were from pre-merger to this year, first year of merger. Um, the, we're all starting out as, if you look at the note at the bottom of the page, we all start with the same equalized tax rate because we're being looked at as though all five of our towns were one single taxable entity. Um, 
the reason why each town then has a different rate in the end is because of the common level of appraisal. People from East Montpelier, I don't have any specifics on this. I just happened in the last couple of days over the news to hear that the state has a, I'm not even sure what website it's at, but they now have a, uh, a feature at, at the state level where you can input your own uh, family income, cost of your dwelling. Uh, there's four or five figures you put in, including the uh, per pupil spending, and it, it'll it'll spit out at the end how it will impact your particular tax rate. I apologize, I don't have any information on it, um, but for for people that are interested in getting specific detail on their particular family situation on the tax, there there is some kind of a site or app or whatever it would be called at the state level that I saw on the news this morning and heard on the radio. So for those of you that are interested, it might be worth exploring. So anyway, this is how the budget info was communicated. And um, I'd just like, if I may, ask your opinion as to whether you find the communication to have been adequate, successful. Um, I, I see at least one head shaking. Um, I, I would welcome any sort of um, any sort of responses, any ideas as to how we can do it better next time? If you thought it should be done better. I've already said what I had on mind. Okay. It was flat. I just, um, I think part of the problem this year was it's new. We weren't aware of what was going in the books until it was too late. That's probably a fault of ours for not being more on top of it. But then when, for me personally, when I learned the salary information, the FTEs of how many people are in the buildings was not in, I started calling and saying, we need to get this. People are going to ask for it. And um, I think putting the report together this year was so different and not anticipated how different it was going to be as a board. So that next year we have it better. Thanks. <laughs> it may have been different to the board. However, I think there's been a lot of communication over the years between the town clerk's offices and the central office as far as what our taxpayers, what our voters have been asked asking for and so to me it wasn't reinventing the wheel or anything. I mean it's the same information. If it's not going to be put in the local tax reports it needs to be put in those single school annual report. And that's what we weren't aware. And I don't see why even at this date why more information could be made available on the WCSU thirty two website where there is um, budget information that more could be put there, more could be available at the offices. I find it very interesting over the last six years that I've been the assistant town clerk, the number of people that still after town meeting are interested in getting the town reports and still reviewing. They kind of already have it in their mind how they're going to vote, but they are still interested in the details. So just because they don't get it in the time for the vote tomorrow doesn't mean it should happen and then maybe it will be all the easier next year to pull that information together because you won't be able to say what well, we bought with it after last year's to be able to say well last year's we needed to still put out more information and then it would all come together a little bit more easily. Well, thank you, Corinne. Um, Anne, I'm so sorry. No, I, my no, view of you is this. <laughs> I just wanted to um, confess that if there was a notice mailed to me, I must have put it in the recycling because I don't remember getting it. Um, and so um, I was also not aware that there were copies on the web and in, in school and central offices. I mean, that's one of the down. 
downsides of not having kids in school and getting weekly reports. So I would like to suggest being a front porch forum addict and knowing that something like 97% of Vermonters are on front porch forum, that there be also notification put there. Also, when it says copies, that's copies of the full annual report. Did we get mailed copies? We used to get mailed copies of like the U32 report. We did not mail copies this year. It was at one of the um, at one of the organizational meetings. I forget which one. Back last spring, um, the April meeting. Um, the the assembled. Um, just like this, the, the assembled meeting, uh, the assembled voters from all the towns voted not to send universally to all voters the, the annual report, but to but to make a notice of availability. Um, and that, I think that was an experiment. It did not turn out really well. I know that it's very expensive, but there's got to be. I'm old and forgetful, but there are plenty of younger people who are overworked and don't have you know, their attention on paper things that come through the mail. So there's got to be a better way of letting people know. I mean, that town meeting booklet that comes every year is, you need to set up a ritual like that. Even if it's not a mail copy, there has to be some kind of expectation that, okay, it's February. We, you know, because I, I completely didn't know what was happening. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, we would have to vote on such a thing at this meeting. Um, and, and that can be. Done. Any vote tonight would be advisory. Yeah. But that is fine. Better than that. People are giving you advice as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Rick. Uh, I just, you know, one weird wrestling a lot more now than funding, which is a really good thing. You've heard me say it a million times that a capital funding involves real discipline, fiscal discipline, discipline, that it takes a really long time to And I would really like to see detailed reports. When, how, what those expenditures are the plan, and what is actually being taken out of it. There's a big problem with capital funds, is that they turn into slush funds if they're not very tight. And so, and then you're defeating the purpose of the capital. That's happening in Congress. And so, you need to really, that needs to go in front of the public. Here. What is what is that money being spent on? If you have to have a clear definition of what you're calling capital, you know, what, is, what qualifies as a capital expense, what is an operational expense. And I think that has got to be very public and very busy. And it's got to be clear. You know, people will judge themselves. I mean, they're, 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 they
most recently, I believe it was in our last February meeting, the board approved allocations for summer projects, including how we are going to spend existing and set aside funds, school by school, with details about what each project was. We have as yet to complete the long-term capital project plan, but that is stage two, and it will require more conversation about funding and resources. But it has been a, a, a very uh, prominent feature of the board's work and the finance committee's work over the course of this year. Would you like to add anything to that? Right. And one of the things that the board had asked us to do was to also uh, have an individual to oversee the construction projects. And Bill Ford, many of you may know, has been our clerk of boards for almost every school. Uh, and he's agreed to take that role on. So he's already started working with us on Wednesday. We have a project that uh, we're recommending the board for uh, this coming back for the Doty School this year. Uh, and we're, he's going to continue to oversee and manage those projects throughout this coming year. So we're paying close attention to I'll, I'll also mention at the beginning, we've heard a number of times from you correctly about the importance of long-term planning and making sure that you're forecasting, right, and that you have obsolescence in mind and that you have maintenance in mind. Everything I've seen over the last year shows me that we're doing that on the budget level, right, that you know, forecast for the budget, right, for, um, you know, we're, there are other districts around that did not plan as well as we did for the worst case scenario of, you know, the insurance uh, settlement that would have been negotiated benefits back to the statewide level. Um, so I see that long-term plan there. I see that long-term plan beginning to happen on the, on the facility side. You know, that's something that's very important to you. I've been very impressed with the, you know, the way that the administration has communicated to us and communicated to the principals in each of the buildings and the staff in each of the buildings to make sure that those things are being taken care of. Nothing's going to be perfect, right? There's always going to be gaps, but I think we're moving very, very much in the right direction. I think that your feedback has been important in that over the last year. I've heard a number of times about that. So I just want, I wanted to take this opportunity at this annual meeting to make sure that you know, those words have not gone up. Donald from Berlin. Um, first of all, I just want to thank you all. I've, I've come in and out of meetings, and to even just get to this point, you all have done yeoman's work. There's a lot more things that could be done for sure. Um, but I think as Rick said, uh, when this started in 2015, the emphasis was on cost savings. And I think we all know that. And somehow over the years, it seems to have gone some other direction. And I'm wondering what the board is going to do about saving costs because I'm looking forward to it. And I don't know whether you've got a uh, committee, you've got some expertise here that can look at what we're doing going forward and save us money because property taxes are out of sight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pat. Um, this is very much on our minds, but we're finding it very difficult to actually um, cut costs uh, there is a natural tendency because of the expanding needs that we are encountering. Um, we're trying to keep up with those, and that costs more money. Um, please. Um, I just I got some statistics uh, today, hot off the press from uh, the state, and equalized pupils are going down. You know, you know all you know all this. Taxes are going up, household, and um, I was wondering if you would um, rely on the community. If there are some folks that would volunteer to look just at cost savings and work with you on that, that maybe that's a good approach because, regardless of how this has transpired, um, as I said before, I think we're all waiting for the cost to go down. I may be wrong, but I don't. Think so. It's a very interesting idea. Um, yeah. Thanks, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. 
Stephen Dellinger Pake, uh, Berlin resident. Uh, we do have another writing candidate in Berlin, um, that is Diane Nichols Fleming, um, who is uh, also going for the three year term. So we, we don't have any candidates on the ballot, uh, so you have to write in for Berlin. Um, and so we would love to have uh, Diane uh, Nichols Fleming and Jonathan Goddard written in three year and two year. So if you guys can help us out, that would be great. As a Berlin resident, we would like full representation. Thanks. And Stephen, do you know how to spell Diane Nichols Fleming? N-I-C-H-O-L-S dash Fleming, F-L-E-M-I-N-G. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> my proxy. That, that was my ventriloquism for you. That's great. Thank you. Um, Berlin likes to make us work for their representation. Uh, are there any other questions or comments or uh, no, no, no. Please. Oh, but we can hear a motion from the floor. I'm Dave Connor. I have just a quick comment. Uh, the jury is out on Act 46 still. And uh, it landed on all of you. And so I'm seconding what Pat said about the incredible work that all of you have had to do and the fact that it is a bit of a new educational bureaucracy that we're dealing with. The reason I'm bringing out besides the words of gratitude to you all is that there will be the same kinds of discussions about reporting and, and jurisdiction and good ideas and what part goes into what in all the towns tomorrow at town meeting. And so I'm recommending that we do a comparison and feedback both to the legislature and to one another in all the school districts because each district may solve one of the issues and questions we've raised in a more creative way or have a new idea. So I hope that when we decide how we will proceed and what next year at this time it will look like, we're benefiting from the mistakes and the hopes and the ideas of the entire state. So thank you all. Yes, thank you. Another wonderful idea. And Chris. Um, can we hear a motion from the floor on um, a mail report for next year with more detail? I heard we could have a motion on the floor. Was it a better guess? Yes, that. It, can be any, it will only be advisory. It yes. will find even, you. But even advisory. Can I, can I make an amendment to that, Chris? Well, I'm not making a, a well, we hear a motion from the floor. So well, what's your motion? What, what's your motion? Yeah. No? Yeah. I mean, based on what we heard tonight, it sounds like there's a, a desire for a more detailed annual report coming out to the citizens, more detailed in terms of uh, budget, salary, school performance, and other items. You don't actually need a motion to have more detail. I understand, I, I understand that, that, but what I'm saying, what we do, because we had a vote, well, in terms of mailing it to, mailing it. Just, Right. Um, but we need a part. Okay. Then at least for the mailing part. Do we hear a motion on that? Make the motion. I want to make sure we include everything. That then we include that new motion. This motion isn't gonna be it's in our minutes. I understand it's you. So 
Right. Rosemary Morris, Berlin Town Clerk. May I make a suggestion that we go back to putting it in our town reports? Just get it to the towns before the town report goes to press and can go in the annual town report in all five towns. And almost everybody gets those if they come into the office or mail them. You wouldn't have to do a mail. They can get their own town report. Yeah. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, there, there is sort of buzz up here about there being some logistical issues to, to reckon with. But, um, but we have noted it. Um, and thank you very much. Um, yes, Nicole. Again, I just, um, I don't know if this is appropriate, Gus, so you can stop me. I went to the Supreme Court hearing in Middlebury and watched David Kelly perform miracles. Um, I hope that we all will do something for David Kelly, who has spent his entire last couple of years free for nothing. Um, and what he did in front of the Supreme Court it just blew me away. He was spectacular. Was, there's a few of us that were, that were there. And I would hope the board would start something so that we can all thank him.
Venn diagrams of communities and stakeholders who are, you know, we intend to you know, share information and create, you know, keep information moving horizontally and up and down. Um, you know, there's there a lot of other things that have, have gone on, um, but I would just, you know, I'd love to hear from you folks about, you know, I'll also go back to October when we saw some initial test scores in math and reading. There have been a lot of conversations in the board, you know, in public session about how we're teaching reading, how we're teaching literacy, how the changes to special education funding are going to affect us. And before we break this meeting up, I would love to hear from you folks some more, right? There's a whole lot of topics for conversation there. And we are here to, to listen to that. Right? I hesitate to say this because I know how hard you all work, but I continue to be um, impressed by Dave Yagaboni's report on Front Porch Forum in the legislature. I really would like to have our school board members give us a personal report that is along those lines. Uh, maybe you can alternate different months, but um, I, I've appreciated Dot's summaries, but somehow it feels more like an outline, and I, I would like to have the feeling that somebody is talking to me and telling me what's going on the way you just did. I'll say that that's been difficult to do, you know, trying to have, you know, trying to put out communication that speaks with one voice, right, because, you know, I think we do agree on most of our stuff here. It has been difficult to get you know, centered around one voice. The open meeting law makes it difficult for us to get together when we're not in open session and talk about that kind of messaging, but I hear, but I hear that loud and clear. Why does it have to be one voice? I mean, these are all elected representatives to our town. Because I don't want to step on Jael's toes, and I also don't want to step on Scott's toes. That's my honest answer. Yeah, first, I want to say thanks to all of you. Yeah, I just, what it will be important to really follow up on this. Don't, of course, Scotty, 
get this right, and we, you know, we can't we can make a mistake on this. We can lose it every year. It's another generation that we will be really set back. So I hear that. We, there needs to be a good continuous loop of conversation until we know that those schools are comfortable with what we're doing. We can't let the pressure on that. It's not of course. These are these are also challenges that every other high school in the state is dealing with.